Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this episode we are going to talk about how hormonal birth control affects our menstrual cycle. And let me tell you, there is so much more to our cycle than just growing babies. Our hormones play such a big role in our bodies. They affect how we think and feel and even our choice in partner. Learning about hormonal birth control and how it affects our natural cycle is just the first step to understanding everything else. In our brain, we have something called a pituitary gland. It is the size of a pea and it plays a big role in regulating vital functions. On our first day of the cycle, which is when your period starts, your estrogen and progesterone levels are low and this sends a message to your brain and pituitary gland that you are not pregnant. The brain then sends a message to the pituitary gland and the pituitary gland starts releasing the hormones, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone to the ovaries. These hormones act as a message to let the ovaries know that they should start maturing some eggs. Once an egg gets chosen, it starts producing estrogen. This thickens the uterine lining and changes the consistency of the cervical mucus, making it easier for the sperm to get in. Once all the preparation is done, the egg gets released into the fallopian tube and the sperm has about 24 hours to get to the egg before it dies. After the ovulation, the ruptured egg follicle starts releasing progesterone, which becomes the dominant hormone in this phase, causing the uterine lining to thicken even further to make it nice and strong for the egg to implant itself. And the cervical mucus thickens to keep any sperm from entering. Everyone is now patiently waiting to see if all the hard work paid off. The brain, pituitary gland and the ovaries are working together to monitor the hormone levels so that they know where they are in the cycle. For example, when I mentioned earlier about our first day of the cycle, when estrogen and progesterone are low, this tells them that the body is not pregnant and it's time to start a new cycle. When estrogen rises but progesterone is low, this tells them that an egg is mature and ready for release. And when all the hard work is done and estrogen and progesterone are high, the brain, pituitary gland and the ovaries are waiting to see if fertilization took place. If it did, then estrogen and progesterone will remain high. If it didn't, both hormones will drop and the cycle will start all over again. Now let's see what happens when we add artificial hormones to the mix. So there are two methods of hormonal birth control. The first one is the combined method. The pill, the patch and the NuvaRing are all combined methods, which means that they contain a synthetic form of both estrogen and progesterone. The second method is the progesterone only method. In this category we have the mini pill, the hormonal IUD, the shot and the implant. Going back to the chart, we can see that the time of the cycle when our body is not trying to get pregnant is this part, when progesterone levels are high relative to estrogen. It is this part that is mimicked by hormonal birth control. Hormonal birth control gives us a constant flow of the same hormones every day, which is high progesterone and relatively low estrogen. The difference between the combined and the progesterone only method is that all the combined methods block ovulation, whereas with the progesterone only methods, women can sometimes still ovulate. Despite this, progesterone only methods will still be effective against pregnancies because of the thickening of the cervical mucus, which I talked about earlier. As I mentioned in the beginning, our menstrual cycle is not just about growing babies, it is far more complex than this. Estrogen and progesterone does not only influence the reproductive system but also every other cell in the body that binds estrogen and progesterone. This is a cell and this cell has a receptor for estrogen and progesterone. These hormones act as messengers 
that tell the cells what to do. When a hormone is released, all the cells in your body that has receptors for that particular hormone will pick it up. The hormones in birth control bind to all the other cells in our body that has receptors for estrogen and progesterone. This means that hormonal birth control will influence billions of other cells as well as our reproductive organs. However, hormones in birth control do not always bind as well to the receptor as the natural hormones, which means that the hormonal message will be different. Interestingly, these receptors are found in all the major parts of the brain, which means that hormonal birth control has a massive influence on the brain, affecting how we think, how we feel, our interests, our behavior, and sometimes even our choice in partner. I will make a separate video on that later, so stay tuned for that. The bottom line is, women operate on a cycle. We go with the flow. Get it? Hormonal birth control gives us the same hormonal message every day, as opposed to a menstrual cycle which is always fluctuating. Furthermore, it does not only affect our reproductive organs, but also so many other bodily functions. The information in this video is taken from Dr. Sarah Hill's work. If you want to check out her book, I'll put the link in the description below. Okay, so I hope you got some value from this video. Subscribe for more videos. And as always, if you have any questions or video suggestions, just let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon.